Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to our subscriber game tournament season two as we are concluding our round two matchup here between Soviet Bear and Peanuts as this is our final match in our final group. And in the previous matchup, we had Peanuts utilizing Yuan Shao and Yuan Tan's attack speed bonus to take the win on defense. And now the sides are swapped and Soviet Bear here in the green is using a very similar army there is a slight adaptation. It's still Liu Zhang with four units of the Dong Zhou Bing, still Xu Huang with four units of the Qing Zhou Assault Infantry, and Sima Ying has been swapped out for Zhou Yu, who is still bringing a trebuchet on defense, which is interesting as a response fire to any offensive trebuchet. It's an interesting tactic. I'm not sure if it will work though. And then we have crossbow, repeating crossbow, and a handmade guard for some damage resistance on the generals. This can be very interesting actually, because if, in this case, Peanut is running the same strategy, which he is, he's bringing the same exact generals. With more funding on offense, we have more units, but the generals are the same. It's still Yuan Shao, Yuan Tan, plus Lu Zhi. There is a trebuchet, there is still three units of the Unbreakable Defender of Empire, there is now four yellow dragons, two archers for fire arrow, one destroyer of treachery, which is a splash damage shot cavalry, and two of the Ye Vanguard crossbowmen, which is a better choice actually, because you really just want some range attack in this case, and they will do it. Uh, they're on Yuan Tan there. Uh, ammo might be slightly limiting, but um, they will have regular crossbow range compared to the Spearman variety. So the big problem that Soviet Bear faced in the first match and this match will be the fact that if Yuan Tan and Yuan Shao dismount, they will have insane attack rate. We're talking about over 100 attack rate and the damage also gets a 50% boost, so they are very, very good, efficient general killers when they're dismounted. And to combat that in this case, given the army composition that Sylvia Bear has, there is probably two different options. The standard way to counter this type of general abuse is the fact that these generals don't have any splash ability or damaging ability at all, so throwing infantry at them actually works really well. In this case, the Qingzhou unit assault infantry will do very well trading into both Yuan Tan and Yuan Shao, who are commanders at heart, so there is only 25k health on them, and fighting these misplaced devotion Qingzhou unit will wear them out. And once you kill one, they lose the bonus on the other, and you can easily then kill off the remaining generals, because no one's really strong here uh, without that boost. Luger is not really going to be a capable fighter, and you can also utilize Wisdom River on Zhou Yu to do a similar uh, job to reduce their armor advantage as well. And they don't have high evasion. Both Yuan Shao and Yuan Tan only have 28% evasion. So even without Wisdom River, you can land hits on them. It's just a matter of returning damage. And in general versus general combat, there's not a lot of restrictions in terms of the animation slowness of match combat which becomes a real issue against masses of infantry as you often see these sword generals try to do execution moves on these infantry one at a time, which really slows down their attack rate. So throwing about 480, you know, Qingzhou assault infantry at them will kill them, in my opinion. And that's probably the best way to deal with them in this case. Conversely, if they want to get into a general fight, it's not impossible, but you have to do a couple things to trick them into fighting you in a favorable position. Most likely the enemy target is going to be Xu Huang. My bet is they will dismount and charge him. So given the resources that we have, what we actually need to do is dismount Xu Huang. Use Seize Fire only on Xu Huang and then put the handmade guard near him which will give him a 75% damage resistance. My concern here is even with 75% damage resistance, Xu Huang's still gonna get killed if he gets double teamed by Yuan Tai and Yuan Shao with the insane attack speed boost, especially considering that Ceasefire also lowers your attack speed, so Xu Huang wouldn't be able to output as much damage back. So that's probably not the greatest scenario you can do, but that is definitely an option. 
Now the best case scenario is just you seize fire, freeze them in place when they dismount, run your other generals away, swarm them with your infantry, and just let your infantry do the damage, because that's probably the best plan. So let's see how this one actually plays out in deployment and see if Sylvia Bear can tie up the series or will this Yuan Shao Yuan Tan strategy carry Peanuts into the top eight. Alrighty, taking a look at deployment here, we have an interesting assault position, which is this piece of the wall outside the forest. And the rationale here is not exactly to use the forest because he has placed this unit out in the open. Uh, the Tribuchet has cleared the tree line so they can use their fire weapon if they want to. They are turtle units here, which will absorb the aggro of the towers. There is a response by the crossbowman on the wall, which I think is okay because I think the idea is that the Tribuchet will try to trade fire with the enemy Tribuchet, and if they can bring it down, then the wall will stay up and the crossbow can maximize their damage. Uh, although these yellow dragons can stay in turtle forever and just ignore that damage, and also Yuan Shao and Yuan Tan both have, well, actually, only Yuan Tan has Stone Boric, uh, which will give the unit 100% range block chance to close this gap. So we'll see how this actually plays out. The Tribuchet duel has one major issue. Sylvia Bear's Tribuchet is level 4, and Peanut's Tribuchet is level 8. So guess who's going to be more accurate here? And we'll see the targeting priority to see if it will be a Tribuchet trade shot first, or do they just go for the wall? Alright, so Tribuchet on Tribuchet. It's the next level. Oh! Ceasefire? This is very risky. There's no reason to actually do this. Lighting the forest on fire is a good plan, but I will probably switch to regular shot because I think it will do more against the Tribuchet. Going for the wall. Okay, these crossbow might just die. Get them off. Get them off the wall. Two more volleys at most. Right. He has to watch out. He can't ceasefire if Ludri gets too close and then he can't do anything. Oh, he's in trouble. Why? Why are we doing this? He can't use his ability. He's going to, he's going to try to kill the, the Tribuchet? Ah, that was so close. Oh, he got it off. He got it off. But he can't move too. And the crossbow can shoot him. Oh dear. Oh dear, he's dead. The thing about Ceasefire is you're going to freeze yourself. Right? So... I don't know why running out is a great option. Alright, the infantry made contact, so they can all move a little bit. Yeah, have not been able to hit a, take a hit. The walls collapse. These crossbow lost 80 units. I mean, Liu has gone. There's been the dismount. They're ready. They're gonna dash for him. The moment this ceasefire times out in 20 seconds. The turtle units are there. I mean, no one else can move, so, I mean, everyone's on ceasefire. Yeah, the problem is, the fire shot can't take out the engine. The regular shot can. Alright, it's over. Here comes the hack. Hack, 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 dead. So fast. That is insane. Alright, crossbows wasting their shot on- Ooh, we got an active Sally out to fight, charge them. But they're not really that quality of an infantry. Uh, the handmade guards are really far away from the generals. That is weird. As are these Dondro Wing defenders. And there's no command to get them to move here either. Alright, now we have the full on assault. The other wall going down. Another big chunk of the repeating crossbowmen have gone down. There's only about a third of each of the crossbow type still alive. I mean, there's there's been some fire damage to the units, but not much. You know, about 11 unit kill from the fire attacks, 20. Not too many. These archers are going to get their value just shooting down the towers. Okay, there is a the use of the forest to just hide the generals away from the towers. That's decent. And now there's just a range advantage, you know, basically. Tribuchets aren't that great at killing units. So, summoning one on defense 
is a big drain of fun. It has killed 67. Ooh, that repeating crossbow just gone. Uh, at this point, parking them behind the wall is probably the best thing you can do. Um, yeah, staying on the wall is not great. And that wall collapse took out a chunk of these Tindril units as well. I would charge the Yellow Dragons at this point. Staying in Turtle is not the best use at this point. They're, this aggro is being grabbed. This tower is going down. They should just charge. Oh, we got the generals coming in. Yep, the two dismounted father and son combo taking out Xuan like it's nothing. Knife through butter. He's down. And it's just Zhou Yun. Zhou Yun just needs to get out. Let the Tinjo unit fight them. You can see they're getting chunked. The Tinjo unit can do damage. Has he used Wisdom River? I, I don't see it on them, but maybe he already used it. Just leave. There's no point in to be here. There's no active ability. He doesn't even have Stifling Deluge. There's nothing he can do. Just back off and let them take damage. As you can see, they're taking decent chunk from the Tindril unit. Now they're getting Misplaced Devotion, which is double damage. So this can be countered. It's not like this, you know, super insane, unbeatable strategy. It's just you got to know they're scary generals and just don't give them that fight. Look, he lost 15k fighting in this mess. He lost about 15k fighting in this mess. Now, these units are not being pulled back. Maybe they can just defend the the bridge now at this point. The archers have not been killed. So that's a problem. They have remounted, which is probably wise. That way they can get out of infantry in case they get surrounded. There's not much Sylvia Bear can do with what unit he has left. Joe is fighting here. I mean, the fact that Handmaid Guard never really joined the generals is very puzzling because this is recruited just for the guard passive. There could be some initial deployment movement, which we don't know about, but given how great these units are placed on the wall, I don't think they were like psyched out of a different attack zone. So this is just a little weird. Maybe forgot to put those units over and forgot to summon them in the beginning of the fight. Uh, a bit unfortunate. Now these Ye Vanguard crossbowmen have quite a bit of ammo. Well, 8 left, 15 left here, so about probably 20-ish in the beginning, which is a decent amount uh, for crossbow units. Dismount, chop chop time. Oh, Joe, you actually is taking the initiative, but not going after, okay, there we go. Are we going after the general? Manchal's low. Manchal's low, can he get a couple hits? That's not going to really work because Wisdom River is still active, but once that's down, oh. Yuan Tan's dismounted. Yuan Shao's dismounted. He's busy fighting infantry. I mean, just having infantry nearby to distract is definitely good. A couple hits back. Yeah, the attack speed difference is just... Maybe something you can't overcome. Especially with Zhou Yu, who has half attack speed because he's a strategist. So he's 15 versus... Yep, not even close. And the fact that we also add on turning the tide for extra 25% damage. And that is just a bad situation. All right, we have a pullback maybe to the bridge, but looking at what units are left and the barricades. Yeah, I, defensive barricades, I just don't think it's a good idea. You're limiting where your unit can move. And in this case, it's very hard for them to get back to that bridge without getting cut off here. Maybe they can loop the other way, but that's even blocked. So for them to even take that point or this point, they would have to go all the way over here. The escape path have been cut off and they have to make a last ditch effort here without the safety of the towers, which, which is just not going to happen. Well, I think the yellow dragons are probably happy to take a counter charge fight. As long as they get their charge off, that's really all their value is.
Now, Dondro being our just glorify spear guards, not gonna really do much. Vanshaw can probably move a little closer to give them the distant courage. 150. Oh, actually, that's big enough. Wow. That's 150. Huge. Maybe a little Stormborg for the own units. Not that it really matter. Turning the tides active because Luger is close enough. It's about 100 meter for that. Uh, Dongjo Bing has filtered through, but there's way more than enough unit for Peanut Side to really just match that. There's a full unit of Yellow Dragon as reserve. And the arrows are going to pour down and finish this. Great match. Uh, so the winning formula for Peanut here is the Yuan Father's Son combo. And it worked out for him in both matches. He was able to easily eliminate the generals and basically win from there with his units as Sylvia Bear has some... Uh, I think the main issue is the unit choice because he wants to pick Liu Zhang, but I don't think he grasps how to properly use Seize Fire in many of these fights. Uh, that aggressive charge up, I think it's a slight misunderstanding of what happens to you after you use Seize Fire because you're not going to be able to move out of there. It's very different from Lu Bu's Dragon's Gaze, where he freezes the enemy units and then he can keep moving because it doesn't really affect generals. Uh, ceasefire affects everyone, including yourself. So stalling them in this initial charge so the fire could burn a little bit longer, it's only going to kill like maybe at most 20 units. Uh, the trebuchet level difference leading to different casualties on the shots and also the choice of the shot. The initial fire shot was good because you want to light this patch of trees on fire, but afterward, if you're trying to fire into enemy siege weapons, the regular round shot that actually rolls on the ground is your go-to choice because that on impact would actually knock out uh, the trebuchet rather than just the fire shot we saw that didn't actually kill off an engine there. And that was a major difference. The spread of the initial units, the handmade guard not providing any advantage to the generals, uh, and also the filtering of generals into those deadly uh, killers, uh, Yuan Shao and Yuan Tan. Uh, the infantry did well. I think with just two Qingzhou units, they chunked more than half of those two generals' health. And if he had just waited for them to charge in that situation, perhaps seize fire them alongside the Qingzhou unit so they're stuck in that position where they have to fight them for a minute, uh, perhaps they could have just killed the generals that way. And that probably would be the solution to something uh, as scary as that in terms of general killing power. But great match, and Peanut moves on. So looking at the numbers here, the trebuchet, I mean, for the cost value to kill just 78 is probably not worth it. Trying to match the enemy trebuchet is an interesting idea, but a very expensive one for the defense. I think trying to sneak a cavalry behind enemy lines is a much better gamble. In that case, you're paying about 400, maybe 500 for a cheap low end cavalry that you can try to just catch the enemy trebuchet off guard to take away something that's worth probably close to 2000 in terms of how much has to be spent to level them up to rank eight. Uh, it's a much better value proposition here. You're hoping for a tie. Uh, you know, you're spending maybe 1,500. They're spending 2000. And you have 3,000 less fund than the attacking side on defense. So you're never going to win that trade uh, in that case. So probably not the best use of fun to get a trebuchet here to counter the enemy strategy. And in the case where they have a trebuchet and you're seeing that they're hitting the wall and the wall percent are going down to 40%, 60%, it's time to pull those crossbowmen off the wall because they're just going to die for free. And trying to push the defensive force out to the city while the wall was crumbling is also very risky as, you know, one of those walls took out about 60 of these Qingzhou units, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, overall, just um, a slight lack or a just gamble on the wrong things, I think. And in the end, Peanut with that one strategy that he has found with the Yuan Shao Yuan Tan, uh, definitely carried him through this round as he will be moving directly to uh, the top eight and we'll see what happens in round three to see who joins them as we have three pairs three groups six players who did not make directly into the top eight 
six players has, that means there's two places left. And from those six players who'll be playing me in a time trial event, which I'll describe tomorrow, the top two times will advance to join the rest in top eight. So we'll find out what is the time trial tomorrow. So until then, bye.